Robert Courts. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's a pleasure to uh, follow so many speakers in this debate who have spoken with such passion and such knowledge about this uh, topic, which about which all of us are, uh, are absolutely dedicated on all sides of the House. And may I also thank uh, the uh, Backbench uh, Business Committee uh, uh, for having granted the debate and uh, my honourable friend for Stoke North uh, for having co-sponsored it with me. And I may I also, at the start of my remarks, refer the House to my declaration of members' interests. Uh, now, Madam Deputy Speaker, in 1940, the... Um, the Royal Air Force realised that it was going to need new uh, aircraft and it asked the North American company to look at designing one and it became the legendary P-51 Mustang. Now that went from request to first flight in 148 days and it's fairly trite that we cannot do that anymore uh, and that's precisely why from my perspective I would like uh, this debate and uh, this topic to be considered seriously by the government because we have to think about the kind of capability that we're going to need in the future, what it's going to be where it's going to come from, uh, what the Air Force needs, and how we're going to get it. Because the story that we've seen since 1940 and through the rest of the decline, of, in many ways, of the individuality of the British aircraft industry is quite a sad one. And I'm just going to give two very quick examples and very limited time available to me uh, as to an example of what we should try to avoid. Firstly, the 60s, three V-bombers, three different aircraft industries competing with three excellent designs. Why was it that we had three excellent designs competing for the same space with the result that we now have none of those aircraft industries existing on their own. Secondly, the Harrier, probably the last great all-British aircraft that was designed, which we sold to the Americans, the AV-8A. We then looked at having an advanced Harrier, and for various reasons, we decided in the end did pulling out of our own advanced Harrier program. And there was a number of reasons for that, costs, abilities, but also because the RAF only wanted 60, which just wasn't enough for the amount of uh, input that had to be put in. So what we ended up doing, albeit on a joint program, was essentially buying back from the Americans an anglicised Harrier. So the AVAB, the GR5, 7 and 9 that we've seen uh, throughout the 80s and 90s really was an, a, an anglicised American aircraft. And it's exactly that that I want to avoid, of seeing brilliant British industry, brilliant British skills, British brilliant technology, not having the input that it needs through a lack of looking strategically at where we're going to be going. And that's exactly what I... In a very powerful speech, and would he add to that the fact that the Typhoon began on the drawing board in 1984 and came into service in 2003? Isn't that precisely the problem? Right, and I'm very grateful to him for making that point. If we look at Typhoon, if we look at uh, F-35, uh, if we look uh, at also, in my constituents, the A400M, all of these aircraft have had a gestation period running somewhere between 20 and 30 years, depending on how you cut the uh, initial date. So if that's the sort of period we're looking at, uh, then we need to be looking at what will be replacing Typhoon when it's out of service in 2040. And I know it's counterintuitive when we haven't got JSF F-35 in service yet, but we have got to, as I'm very grateful for the Honourable Member for uh, pointing out, to consider what's going to be replacing it as we're looking now. So that's something we have to start doing, but I'd like us all not to become, as we tend to become, uh, quite uh, fixated upon fast jets and upon the, uh, the strike aircraft, because we also have to look at trainers and transport aircraft as well. We've already referred um, to the Hawk, and that clearly is something that would have to look into this mix. And really what I'm trying to say is I want to see an ambition for aviation, as we all do. I want to see where the fast jet capability is going to come from in the future, but I also want to see the transport aircraft uh, coming from the future, so we know what's going to be replacing, in due course, the A400M, the c 7 uh, obviously the Hercules will probably be long gone by that stage. But also, what are we likely to need? Because it's very inefficient, as we all know, to go and send a Type 45 destroyer to go and do some uh, light patrol aircraft, um, uh, activities in the Caribbean when you could be sending a patrol boat. Likewise, if what you want is a show of force, do you really want to send an F-35 to support troops when there's little or no air threat coming back from the other side? Or could we look at what the Americans are doing? They have a light uh, attack aircraft competition that they're considering at the moment. Could we be doing this? Now, I don't know the answer to that. Fundamentally, that's something that the Air Force and the Ministry of Defence will have to consider. But my point is that we have to look at what we're going to need, how we're going to go about getting it, and what the capability is, and then to go forward and look at it from here. We can't do that unless we have that ambition for aviation. Now, I've concentrated very much upon type, but of course I'm not taking away from the facts that others have made, which is that the jobs, uh, the industry, and there's lots and lots in my constituency who are absolutely dependent from all points, from Talas, uh, Airbus, Boeing, RAF Bryce Norton, Air Tanker, uh, Airbus helicopters just over the constituency. I could go on and on. This is all uh, terribly important as well. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm very grateful for the short time that's been available to me. I hope I've made my point with force. I would just like to see us have an aerospace strategy so we know where we're going and we have the ambition for aviation that we all want to see. Yay. You have to reduce the time